and welcome to Down the Alley. This is PMAC. And Ted T. Esperides. And Katie. Happy week one. We just had opening night. I feel like opening day for baseball was, uh, it seemed like yesterday. It wasn't that long ago. Uh, so I was kind of getting the opening day, opening night vibes of last night. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't personally on a sideline for a game, but we had a scrimmage this week. I know Ted had a game. Katie had a game uh, at the at the nine ten level. Um, I think Peel do Peel girls play this weekend. Peel girls play this weekend. Uh, opening night, Masters week. Sports are back. What's okay, going on? How do you get into the Masters? That's a great question, Ted. Do you know? How do you get into it? Like, yeah, like how do you get to like, like be a guy? I mean, we watched that okay. show, but I guess I kind of there's a couple majors, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't know the specifics, but I believe you have to be. So if you've if you've placed or won the Masters, like so if oh, you yeah you you always the- welcome and you get a parking spot. So if you made the cut the year before, I believe you get invited back. If you've won the Masters, you you always get an invite. And then I think it's something to do with like the top percentage of of the tour. So there's probably like a cutoff of saying like you've you've placed in enough tournaments, you've gained enough points. Uh, yeah, that's either, what it is. Maybe there's a clueless media poll um, that picks golfers best golfers and get to be in it but um i think there is like a cutoff of saying we're looking for the top x percentage based on rankings um and rankings are based on finishes whether you win or place in the top 10 or top 20 uh and then like yeah i remember that you get points and there's like the majors they're always in jupiter florida uh no i mean that's where (laughs) a lot of golfers live but um yeah so so i know they're i know they're I know there are some like qualifying events. I don't know if this was where you were taking it, Katie, but did you see the guy who he he's like works in finance and he, no. and he made, Oh, I thought that's where you were taking this. No, I totally just thought of this earlier that I was like, I, I guess. Cause like everybody watches like Sunday, like the final three guys playing on like Sunday. And like the thing that full swing, like, opened my eyes to is like they're there all week playing their practice rounds getting like you said they're getting points like they're constantly on the road like they're they're golfing more than just Sunday what they show on TV so like the it's, Masters started yesterday right so like the first because they play three rounds or something like wait that. they they practice outside of what they play um, no, so back to I so back to what I thought you were trying to take this to. So there's this there's this dude like who, a regular guy. He works in finance. I think he's a financial advisor, works at a hedge fund or something along those lines, who just loves golf. Um, again, I don't know which specific events he he won to qualify for the event. So he's some eight to five finance guy who's playing in the masters this week. Oh my God. I love those kind of stories. I love a human interest story on sports. He's like 33. Yeah. He's like 33, you know, yeah. just whatever, like go- loves golf. Um, and he's going to be back in the office on Monday morning. Yeah. A normal, um, you know? Yeah. He's a normal, he's a regular. That's so interesting. I always love those. Um, I love those comments. Like when the Olympics are around of like, let's have like a regular person swim. Or like, where would the line of the regular person? I drown. Be? Like, I would drown. Like the, I know, like, where's the D one? Where's the top D one athletes line on the pool? And then all the Olympians are just like absolutely crushing it past them or something. And they have the best swag sales. They they do like a million dollars a day. And so, does your dad have some swag from the Masters, or did I make that up? He has like a hat. I think our grandpa. I don't think he went. went. To, yeah, he went to the Masters and he got it. Yeah. 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 Uh, no running. So have you seen those memes? There's no running. No phones. So you have to just like, there's all these memes of the crowds like speed walking, like with their chairs and their They stuff. have like the pamphlets. You know, they have like the, 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 yeah. like, the this, you know, the, the, yeah, like a brochure. Get, the, yeah, the brochure. Yeah. And there's no running. So I see all those that they're all just like speed walking. It's so funny. 
Oh, good times. Good times. And then then they have hot dogs. I think they're they're they they're like Costco. Like hot dogs are like a buck. Yeah. Yeah. Like once you're in, it's all like they haven't changed the prices in a hundred years. Food's no, never- cheap. Merchandise is marked up like a thousand percent. Yeah. So no, it's cool. Um as games and are going we were around in Augusta, Georgia, and you would never know. You didn't we didn't see a sign. We didn't it's see hidden. a a turn right now we didn't see anything for augusta now like you don't even know if you didn't know it was there you we didn't even go looking for it because we would have had to go looking for it they would not have let us in either yeah well that too it's we were with a different crowd that week and we were with the barbecue crowd and the barbecue crowd and the golf crowd they don't mix yeah, they're but two. Unless, oh, but two didn't he crowds. say he does like? I mean, like, because obviously, like, they rent houses and stuff. That some of the rec tech guys were like the personal chefs for the week for oh, like yeah. the media. Yeah. Like, there was a media house, and there was like you know the not the player, but like the player's family house and all that. So, I think that's kind of cool. Uh, speaking of food, speaking of barbecue, as you go around to different games this season. Uh, you know, Ted, I, you, you were on the road for a couple hours probably yesterday. You're going to be getting hungry. Um, you know, the boys, if you, you know, or the gals right after a big win, uh, you might want to stop somewhere. And, uh, you know, if, if, if old Southern barbecue is on the route, uh, or if there's one near the route that you're going or coming home from, consider stopping in, um, Ted, did you guys stop anywhere last night or was it, oh, we just got to get home? No, it was, um, I think, so the, uh, the boys got fed sandwiches, you know, on the way up. Um, and then I don't know, I don't know, um, what people did on the way back, but I could have gone for some barbecue after that, after that road trip. Uh, I was joking with some people that when I finally got home and all the text messages I had, I was like, I just got off the plane got baggage claim. Um, uh, a friend of the show, uh, coach horn was like, did you guys charter a flight up there, uh, last night? So, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it's like a good hour, hour and a few minutes to get up there to Chisago. I know Chisago has been brought up multiple times on this podcast about the geography of where it is. Um, so I didn't really know. I, I knew where it was, but I've never been there. And I like driving through, I kind of didn't know what to expect. Really nice town, actually. Um, kind of a mixture of, there was like a mixture of like a lot of lakes, obviously Chisago lakes, uh, a lot of nice cabins driving in. And then there was kind of a suburban setup as well. So uh, shout out Chisago lakes, good town, but um, definitely would have loved to have a quick stop at Old Southern Barbecue on the way back. I was definitely hungry. One of the best things I was told one day was <laughs> Coach Heather was just like, the bus will stop wherever you want it to. And I was like, what? And she's like, yeah. She's like, if you guys ever want to stop and like stop and get food or stop and get a snack or something, she's like, the bus will go wherever you want it to go. And I was like, oh my gosh. So we always have our, I was thinking about that yesterday on the bus. I was like, we got to plan our our stops, the girls varsity always stops at Tommy's malt shop after the, the Chaska first day scrimmages that were last Saturday, we stopped at Keynes, um, one time. And I think they're going to, they're going to be all for that again, but like, it's so fun to just like unload the bus with all, you know, your whole team. Then you sit. And I mean, I think the staff probably hates us, but, um, it's so fun. So if you guys get that luxury of stopping the bus, after an away game, it's uh, it's super fun. Can they First, the games pick get a little me, late? Can they pick me up from my house and drop me off <laughs> at my know, house after no. the game? I joke about that because when we go to Rosemount, it's like we pass our house, and I'm like, "Gosh, could you guys just have a pick me up on our way and like at least walk to the corner?" Yeah, I'll meet you on 35. Yeah, exactly. Um. Cool. So last night, opening night, uh, already good matchups, already interesting scores. Um, do we want to start on the boys' side or do we want to start on the girls' side? We generally start with the girls. That's been kind of the cadence. Okay. Uh, Let's so start with the girls. For our listeners, we'll just 
we'll keep it the same if they want to fast forward or only listen to the first half or whatever. Uh, let me pop the girl's schedule here. Yeah, and when I go to look for girls' recaps, girls' scores, uh, I'm going to the source. I'm going to Mrs. PMAC source, and I, I don't know. I don't have a timestamp, but there's already a girls' nightly recap April 11th posted. I think they. I think this was posted last night. Like midnight. Uh, as, at, was it midnight? Okay, so. Uh, I, I woke up this morning and there's already a girls nightly recap ready to go for me to catch up on the girls lacrosse games of last night. I don't need I used to think the source didn't work, but now I just am convinced the source doesn't sleep. I think that that must be. Yeah, I think you're right about that. And where can you see this down the alley pod dot com uh, is is where I go. They also tweet it out on Twitter or X or whatever it's called these days. Girls nightly recap April 11th. 11 pretty good games. Uh, a little rainy last night, but uh, overall good weather. Where are we starting here? Um, I don't know. I feel like we need a we need a plan because we got a lot to talk about because we have to talk about upcoming games. So maybe we can just pick top three, each of our top three scores. Well, first one that I think the first game, first score that, that jumps out to me, uh, a one goal gamer, uh, EP Orno. Orno on top 17 to 16. Yeah, I think that one jumped out for sure. I guess um a the the note was that um let's see the box scores. Someone scored like a hundred goals for Orono. Um Layla Nick scored nine goals for Orono. That's huge. So um She's a freshman. She's a 2027, I think. Yep, freshman. She's a freshman and she scored nine goals. So shout out to her. Um, we didn't get any score. welcome to the league. I don't know. Yeah. I she probably played as an eighth grader, but welcome to the league here. Welcome yeah. to high school. That's huge. Like that's crazy. I was with I was on the field coaching and I asked um one of our players, and I was like, Oh, is she on your team? Speaking of like the um, the 2025 Minnesota elite team is, is pretty elite. Um, and I was, she's like, no, she's, she's like, she's a couple years younger than me. And I was like, oh, wow. Okay. I was thinking she was like some junior out there. Um, so shout out to her. I think the one that, um, popped out to me the most, um, and I got some inside source was the Farmington Blake game, 10 to nine. Um, they were kind of late to put their score in. We're not super late, but um, late to put the the score in, and it sounds like they were battling all all game, and and Blake came ahead in a sudden death OT, and the Farmington girls were down, uh, man down with um, a card. So, um, sounds like a really good battle. Coach Brooke over there, new head coach at Farmington. Um, what a way to just like come out of the gate. I think that's a solid, a solid loss, if you will, for Farmington. I will say, I know I texted this to you guys as well, but obviously, you know, I'm at Farmington, so I, I kind of see their program. They practice before we do every day. So I kind of get to watch the last part of practice uh, and their new coach, Brooke, formerly at Prior Lake now uh, at Farmington is doing a great job over there. Um, not to say the, the previous coaches didn't, but uh, it the, the practices, in my opinion, have been like way more intense and engaging and like they're moving a lot more. Uh, and, and so I'm not surprised that they went out and battled against, you know, a Blake team that, um, like last year they lost to Blake 15 to eight. Uh, yeah. and Blake is, is a, a team that traditionally has a pretty solid girls program. Uh, and so that I would agree with you, Katie, on that. Like, you know, you, you, you want to get the W, but I, I guess a respectable loss or a quality loss, if that's a thing. Uh, for a Farmington program, I think that they're they're going to use that to kind of. Um, I think they can build on that game, you know, heading into the rest of the season. Ted, what uh, what score jumped out to you on the girls' side? Um, there was. I mean, I think those two were the big ones for me, but um, I think the Southwest Christian Chaska game, 
uh, mainly because I know Southwest Christian has kind of been on the rise. We talked to their coach last year. We know they have uh, Gisela Harder, a uh, superstar, I think junior, um, committed somewhere, I think Division One, maybe Division Two. But uh, one thing that we've always talked about with them was when when will be the right time for them to amp up their schedule and start playing you know, bigger programs. I think they play Chaska every year just because – geographically that makes sense um but they a pretty dominant performance for southwest christian so uh against you know like a bigger school i guess i don't know much about chaska girls but i think that's a nice opening day win for them to kind of springboard their 2024 season i I agree and and my my prep team actually went out to chaska um for our first scrimmage game um yesterday too and i mean as of like march uh coach lauren was like i don't think we're gonna have a b team at all like a prep team and they had a solid b roster so um i mean i think that they're like you said they're a strong enough program that they have the numbers and like school size and stuff so i actually love that matchup southwest christian achaska i think southwest christian went to their scrimmages last week too i didn't really hear a lot about those um so I agree. I think that's I think that's a great a great stop for them along the way. Are we going to see another uh, undefeated Southwest Christian in the, in the May? It'll be interesting because I think looking ahead, they play tonight too. So they play back to back games. Um, so that's exciting. I I could I could see Southwest Christian going on a big run, looking at their schedule, looking at their matchups. I think it's going to come down to that last game, May twentieth, for them. Uh, Tonka, mm-hmm. huge test. Um, I, th- I, I think they'll be undefeated until that last game, and then we'll see. Can they, can they beat Tonka? I think that would probably be their biggest test of the year, uh, in, in in the regular season at least. Um, you know, two other close games last night: Anoka, Forest Lake. Like we had the Anoka girls coach on last year, right? Oh, uh, was she Armstrong? Oh. Uh, uh-huh. I don't remember. But anyways, one goal game, good battle, good yeah. first night, opening night, um, as well as uh, Champlain Park, uh, you know, beating Rosemount. Yep. You know, that South- was another big one for us, South Suburban Conference. We're always looking at Rosemount. Yeah, South Suburban Conference, kind of our section, right, um, in, in our world, uh, you know, coming from Prior Lake. So Rosemount's a team we're always keeping an eye on. So Champlain Park beating them instantly you know, kind of kind of checks a box and, and grabs our attention, you know, based on kind of where where we're from, um, you know, over to the boys for this kind of opening night situation. Um, you know, Ted, obviously you were playing. I know we talked a little bit about your game, you know, anything else to add on, on your game, you know, going up to Chisago, um, you know, they're a team. They've gone to state a couple of times. Right. And, um, you know, they're they're a team making noise. How is there any any? You know, for 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 some of uh, you know, the 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 DTA Nation, any any rumors on their concession stands? How is the stadium? How are the facilities? I know nothing about you know, kind of in the weeds of of Chisago Lakes. Um, yeah, the so the uh, as far as the the game itself, uh, it was definitely early April lacrosse. Uh, I. I was pleased with how our team played and, and things that we've practiced. Obviously we haven't gotten to some stuff and, you know, there were some weaknesses there. Um, I thought Chisago was, you know, a gritty team. They played hard. They gave us a full 48 minutes. Um, I think they are, as we expected earlier in the season, I think they're kind of getting through the replacement of nearly their entire starting lineup from last year, but they had, I do want to shout out one player, number 43. Um, his name is Judah. I got to pull it up. So I don't butcher this. Uh, like Judah Gerhardt, I think. Uh, J- Judah Gehring. Uh This guy was a walking bucket yesterday. He, scored four man up goals from the same spot on the same shot. No matter what we did, he found a way to get his hands free. And he's like six, four, just super lanky catches it and has this low to low, like worm burner shot. And he just sticks 
the far side low corner every time. And like, even when our goalies were cheating, it, he could, they couldn't get there. It was, it was unbelievable. So, um, and then after the game, the, the kid had a huge smile on his face too. So, um, seemed like a good kid. So shout out to him. Um, uh, I think maybe Farmington was a little more, a little sharper, maybe a little more polished, but, um, you know, I think both teams probably will look at that game and go like, all right, we got to fix some things going into, um, you know, going into the next matchup. As far as stadium concessions, great facilities, beautiful high school, I think brand new turf. I mean, it, it was really nice turf. Like it looked like it had just been rolled out. Um, so good, good turf, nice stadium. Concessions looked pretty standard. I didn't go there. A couple of the kids had some popcorn and some, pe- you know, frozen pizza. Nothing. There was no like, there was no buzz, you know, off the field of like, hey, you got to try the whatever. So, um, I I would say it's probably, probably satisfactory if I had to pick something. But, um, overall, good experience. They were good hosts. Um, and you know, it it was overall a good game. Fair enough, Katie. Looking at these boys, uh, boys matchups, boys games last night. Anything that that caught your eye? Um, well, the thing that catches my eye the most on Lax Hub is that the submit scores button is like right at the top. I don't know if it's always been like that, but I feel like in the past it hasn't been as easy to like manage, or has that always been there? That's a head coach question. I don't know. You know yeah, what I'm, I'm talking about? Like, it's I'm, right at the top that I was like, wow, okay, we're getting it. We know if you don't know where to go to submit the scores and you that's your job, you can find it very quickly. Um, I would say, I guess I'm going to just go right from the top. Um, Blake, Holy Family, battle of the kind of private schools, I guess, there. Um, shout out to Gold and the staff, 11 to 6. Not a hugely big margin but 11 to 6 I feel like actually if I look at the box maybe like that could potentially have been a close game at some point um in in lacrosse especially I feel like that's oh no stats all right um you know sometimes that can be a closer game than that margin is is showing um and so shout out to Blake for getting Blake boys for getting their first win yeah no that's that's uh that's a huge win for Blake right um, you know, coming off of, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to rebound off of their season last year. So coming out, out of the gates with a win, um, you know, the uh, Blake and, and, and staff has to be, you know, pretty fired up about that for sure. Um, for me, uh, I, I think I am what's catching my eye in some of the, the matchups I look at, um, is, it's kind of like the score disparity, right? I, I was expecting some of these matchups to be tighter. Uh, cause you know, I've, I've, I have a history with a lot of these, these teams, or, you know, maybe I was thinking, you know, maybe, maybe a team is more on the rise or closing the gap. Um, again, anything can happen, right? First, first game of the season, first night, you know, some teams are, you know, coming off a Colorado trip or a Arizona trip, um, you know, where they're fully dialed. They just had a big team bonding week where they were on the field, you know, probably six hours a day together, you know, over, over like a spring break situation or something. Right. A lot of, a lot of things can, uh, sorry, I'm losing my voice here. A lot of different things, you know, like that could, could have played a factor in, you know, maybe this Jefferson Shakopee score or, you know, Benil over Hudson. I had no clue what, to, what to expect from Hudson, um, you know, even, even Tonka, you know, putting up 24 goals. Um, I think t- that's Tonka just saying, Hey, we're here to play this year. Um, you know, and, and we're not messing around. Um, you know, and same with Jefferson putting up double digits, you know, that's just, um, I'm, I'm, I'm impressed by, by that, you know, Jefferson and Tonka kind of coming out of the gates strong, um, you know, may, having a couple of statement wins there. Yeah, I agree. I I'm with you. I thought, I thought personally, some of these games would be closer and um, it is impressive, especially with Minnetonka. Not that I didn't think they were going to win, but sources have said that they, after graduating such a big 2023 class that they were kind of skewing younger this year. Um, and I, um, you know, I, 
Again, I didn't expect them to necessarily have a bad season, but I thought maybe it would take some time for that younger core to figure things out. Uh, but they they seem to have it figured out right away. I mean, 23 goals or 22 goals. Um, you know, obviously they they have things figured out. So that that will be an interesting thing to watch. They look like they have some firepower this year. Yeah, and it just yeah, what? How many practices have have we had? Right. If uh, assuming you didn't go on a on a big trip where you had three practices in a day, like we've only yeah. been practicing for like a week or two. Like yeah. it's it's April it's April twelfth. You know, I, I feel like we're just getting started. So to have your offense humming, um, you know, your you know everything dialed in already. You know, I, that that's impressive. You know, for for some of these teams, Egan too. You know, I I thought I and I still think right Northfield. You know, could could be an interesting team. Same with same with these other teams too. Like, um, I you know I think day one these the, this opening night scores and and things are going to look a lot differently. Late April, middle of May, I think these matchups are definitely going to be closing closing the gap. Um, you know between between some of these first night scores. Um, looking ahead here, uh, looking ahead. Uh, we've got a huge slate of games on Saturday. I think we've, we've, we've discussed that. We'll discuss that again. Um, but this next week there's, there's, uh, so many games. It seems like every single night, um, where, 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 where let's go back to the girls. Let's go back to the girls. Are they, are they doing a, a big Saturday play day at all? Or no. is that just on the boys? Okay. That's just the boys. Okay. So let's go over to the girls. Um, what's this upcoming week? matchups, rivalry games, any border battles. What's what's kind of the girls side bringing us uh here kind of in 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 week 2. I mean, we got to like kind of sift through all these. Shout out to Holy Angels will have their first game um tomorrow or tonight. Um and then looking ahead I guess to set um White Bear Lake and Hill Murray game is tonight too. I know that's one we kind of touched on before. Um, are they the same section or different? I feel like we talked about White Bear Lake girls and Hill Murray girls. They're in the same. Bit. They're in the same. Yeah. Season. So uh, this is kind of the like, I mean, first game of the season, and that could potentially be like a section final game. Um, my but- hedge fund is playing a, um is playing a conference rival Columbia Heights. I think, I think they kind of go at it pretty good. So I'm interested to see, you know, is my, is my hedge fund, you know, coming out strong this year? Is it following the market or, or are we, you know, where are we at? Where are we at? St. Croix prep, shout out St. Croix prep, Columbia Heights, um, a good conference battle. Yeah. And it looks like uh, Moorhead is it, girls are coming down here. The boys are down here as well, but the girls are playing Moundsview tonight as well. So um, that's that's another interesting. I don't know anything about either team really too much, but um, you know, Moorhead is is making the trip first weekend of the season down here to play some games. Um, yeah, and I guess looking to Saturday, there's a lot of really solid. Matchups. I like these matchups on Saturday. I yeah, love I mean, like. Well, top down, there are yeah. some good matchups on Saturday. Yeah. Go ahead. Starting with Farmington at Minnetonka, I think that's a great competition, especially their their uh, kind of their battle against Blake. I think that'll be a really interesting game. Um, Rosemount and Jefferson are going to play. That is a potential section matchup later in the season. They could definitely, depending on seating, this or this is a big game to depend or that's seating will depend on. Um, Delano Chaska um proximity wise um shout out Delano's always got a pretty like s- solid um program so I think that's going to be a really good um I foresee that being a really close game so it'll be interesting what it en- ends up being um obviously okay Southwest Christian boy one two three three games in a row here Thursday Friday Saturday hopefully they can get that big rest day on Sunday and Monday geez um, so maybe they'll be going on a three and all little kick here. Um, and then Stillwater play come that comes down and plays um prior lake. We all three are playing um back to back on Saturday afternoon. It's always 
uh, Prior Lake's first game of the season. So that's that's kind of fun. Um, you know, we always look forward to it. Last year, it was like 30 degrees and snowing. So um, I think we're all looking looking forward to having that not be the weather. Um, and then EP is going down to Milwaukee. And I think that's super fun for them. Um, so they'll be playing a little a little road trip. Yeah, EP, that's... EP seems to always have a cool matchup every year. Yep. They typically used to go to like Loyola, Chicago. So I think that's, it's super fun. It's like, it's not like an, a week long. It's, it's like a night trip. And I think that's um, super fun for them. A game that, that we hopped over, but really intrigues me is this East Ridge Lakeville South matchup on Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, we all know Lakeville South. Like we know they're, they're, um, you know, in the top three at, you know, top three at worst, if not the best team in the state, we'll see, um, but Eastridge, you know, a team that went on our Cinderella run last year is like a five seed out of their section. I think they get a lot of players back. That I'm, I'm interested to see. You know, I expect Lakeville South to win that game, but I'm, ex- I'm excited to see kind of where maybe where Eastridge is this year. This is a good test for them, um, and a good kind of way for us to see kind of where they're at as well. I think the barometer against Lakeville South for the their competition is how many goals do you put up? Like, e- even though if Lakeville South is going to come in, are you scoring 10 goals? Are you scoring four? Or are you scoring like 18? And the score is like 20 to 18, actually 19 to 18, you know, or like 19 to 15. Or is it like you're scoring two? Yeah, I think that's kind of the barometer I'm going to be looking for this year against the opponents of Lakeville South. Are we are we going to go? I uh, yeah through the entire up basically up until Thursday next week, or how how are we breaking this up? Th- Thursday, don't you okay. think we don't have to go through game by game? But all right, well, you know what what day are we on? Sorry, I had a couple. We were on we were on Saturday. I think we t- the Saturday has a nice slate of games. So if you're a girls lacrosse fan, Saturday it sounds like weather's going to be nice. Um, so boys and girls both have a great slate on Saturday, uh, tomorrow, which will be, um, a great way to get out and watch them across, you know, hopping to Monday. Um, what's the game of the night game of the night. I'm looking through here. I mean, the Hill Murray Woodbury game jumps out to me, uh, a little bit just because, you know, again, I think it's like one of those Eastern, uh, battles, but maybe Chisago Lakes Monticello. I think both those girls programs have been on the rise. I think that should be a pretty good game. Uh, and obviously, you already know I'm going with the Monty Magic. Yeah, I know you're going with the Monty Magic. I think, uh, I think the the source was high on the Monty Magic as well. Uh, but we were also high on the uh, on Chisago Lakes girls. They've been kind of pushing their way up section seven. So that's an interesting, an interesting game. And um, I think those are, pro- those are probably the two big ones for me on Monday. Okay. Let's go on to Tuesday. Uh, a couple very interesting matchups. Katie, what's your game of the night for Tuesday? Yeah, I think obviously our, our matchup against Chan, we're coming out of the gate with a pretty big um, strength of schedule at the beginning. Um, you know, we start with Stillwater going to Chan, and then I think the Thursday game is um, Edina. Um, yeah, I think Bloomington Kennedy, Burnsville versus Minneapolis. I think that could p- potentially be a good one for Bloomington Kennedy, Burnsville to maybe get some points on the board. Um, you know, just trying to trying to give them a shout out. I think that they're probably going to struggle a little bit this year, but I think that that's actually a really good matchup. Um, and then I think for me also, it's the Benilde Orono game. If Orono's, you know, coming does, out really strong. Does Orono make this interesting? Like, I does think it they ma- make it interesting a little bit? Like, especially if someone's scoring nine, a freshman scoring nine goals a game. If, if they're, if she's all they got, I don't know. Um, but I think that's going to be don't sleep on Orono kind of thing. On to Wednesday. I got, can I add one more on Tuesday? Do yeah. it. Do it. Uh, Wyzetta Buffalo. Uh two teams that I think I completely missed that. Um, you know, I think two teams that 
we were both are all high on in, in the section preview. I think that will be a telling, it should be a competitive game. Um, and we'll see, I guess we'll see, but that, that one intrigued me as well on Tuesday. On to hump day. Um, Park Cottage Grove and Mounds View for me. Who do you got in that one? Oof. I'm going to go with Park Cottage Grove. What are, what's Mounds View's logo? Are they like, uh, are they like, are they like the stallions or are they like the, they got like a horse or they got yeah, like, well, a, it just has like, like MV on there. I know, but like, what's the low, like, what's their, what's mascot. their thing? They're the Mustangs. Yeah, oh, the like Mustangs. The horse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The Mustangs. I'm, I'm going Mustangs just based on logo yeah. uh, on, uh, with, with that matchup. Um, and uh, then I think also on Wednesday, Forest Lake and Eastridge. I think that could be, um, I think that could be an interesting score. And I know in years past, I know Robbinsdale Armstrong slash Cooper has had a pretty decent girls team. They play Maple Grove in a conference matchup. Uh, Maple Grove is, you know, is a top five caliber program. I don't know where Robbinsdale Armstrong is. I guess it's just Robbinsdale, both of them combined. Um, so that that one's interesting to me, I, but I mean, I expect again, I expect Maple Grove to win, but might be a good way to kind of see where Robbinsdale is as well. On oh, Thursday, yeah. on... oh, I think let's keep Thursday for next week's. Oh, it's the game of the night. We'll we'll recap it next Thursday. We're forecasting next Thursday today. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. My matchup of the night, Duluth versus Duluth. Duluth Marshall versus Duluth. Yeah, nothing, that's... nothing to add. Oh, oh I that I like it. Uh Duluth Marshall had a win, a 7-0 win yesterday. Um uh, you know, in in their game against I think they played Superior. So, um yeah, I love the Duluth. It's cool to see a Duluth Duluth game. Like they have enough for two teams. Um uh, and traditionally they've only I guess on the girls they've had Marshall for a couple years, but um that that is uh yeah, that that's a that's a good matchup. I'm just looking through uh Benil- um, how about Apple Valley in Minneapolis playing at Parade Stadium? That's kind of a cool backdrop. Oh yeah, that is sick. Um, I think my game of the night is Chan Lakeville South. Yeah. Um, Eden, Edina Prior Lake for me on Thursday. A section final matchup. Yep. And then also Blake Benilde, mainly mm-hmm. because that's a, that's a rivalry game for them as well. So yeah. um, a lot of fun matchups on, uh, on Thursday. Yeah. I'm going, I'm going Lakeville South. I'm, I, I'm going to stir the pot here. I think Lakeville South. And I think he Dinah wins big on Thursday. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I think Lakeville South and Chan will be closer than we think. And I think Prior Lake's gonna beat Edina. It's about time. Mm. I might not be able to watch it. I might have to go to PLAY. There you go. How I... how terrible is that? Hey, you could pull. This is a test to see if Nowarts listens this week. You could pull in Nowarts and just watch the game from your car in the parking lot, streaming yeah. it. Yeah, there you go. I can't do that either because I'll either have to be at PLAY or in the box. So, yeah, he did do that all the time. Uh, over to the boys. Uh, like previously mentioned, uh, ton of games, ton of games on Saturday. Um, you know, Friday has a couple of games, more heads coming down. Speaking of parade stadium, playing Minneapolis at parade stadium. Morehead. So I, thought, I thought parade only had baseball fields. Now I have no I thought, clue. Like, ripped up. I definitely have never heard of a team playing there. Uh, like there was, I know they used to have a stadium there and they played football games and stuff like Minneapolis, whatever high school was there, like played there. And then I thought that it was all redeveloped into just like a multiplex baseball situation. Uh, but like PMAC, I know I've texted PMAC about parade being like an elite central. Like if you're going to have like a feature game, 
if you like, or like a, maybe not a state tournament, but like just a feature matchup. Well, Hey, tonight, Friday night lights, yeah. we're headed Minneapolis skyline in the background. Um, so yeah, no, that's cool that they're playing lacrosse games there now. Are they playing someone tomorrow too? Or no, they just are going to go yeah. back up. Yeah. Um, before we go to tomorrow, uh, my, yeah, the game of the night, go ahead. Yeah. The game of the night is Buffalo Monticello. hundred percent. Mainly because the Buffalo coaching staff is now at Monticello. Um, the, the, the head coach moved over there and then slowly, I think some of the assistants moved over there too. So it, it it's, I don't know. I, I don't know if there's any bad blood or anything. There's no, I don't know much about the situation, but it is, it will be inter. How do I want to phrase this? It's our job to pour gasoline on this. It's at Buffalo. Monticello's coming in. The stands are on top of the stadium, it feels like. Have you ever been there? I've seen it. I've never been there. It's a great, intense atmosphere. The fans, it feels like they're on top of you. And if I'm the Monticello staff, it's... Is this... Bring some security. Bring some security tonight. Is it like when someone picks you up in your car and you ride in the passenger seat? Is that what this would be like for the for the Buffalo staff? Like the first game they're playing is at their old home stadium, like sitting in the visitor locker room at Buffalo. They're yes. just gonna be like, like that's gonna be weird. You know, obviously there's players that are still there. Um, and again, I I don't know if like this could have been a very mutual parting and everybody's happy, but it's just, it is kind of, no, that's no, we, we can't say that. That's no fun for the fans. That's we, we, the media can't come on and say, Oh, it's a mutual party. And everyone's had, no, he, somebody's mad about this. And, mad and about guess it. what? The Monty magic. Thanks to the girls lacrosse program. I'm all in on them. Bison Boulevard. They're dead to me. I am riding Monticello tonight. Let's go magic. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Saturday is the East West showdown. We have talked about this a couple weeks now. There's, I think 27 games being played across four fields, across three levels of play. Um, obviously we'll just focus on the varsity side of things, but if you're looking for something to do on a beautiful Saturday, uh, on the boat and you're a boys lacrosse fan, this is probably the place to be. Um, uh, I think my there's a, there's a handful of good games. I think the most interesting game for me is Edina Matamidi. I'm glad we have different choices. Why is that your game of the night? Um, Matamidi was a state tournament team last year. They get a lot of players back. Edina, you know, was could have easily been representing section six last year at state, obviously PL beat them, but it, it was not like it was not a blowout. They were w- the, one of the teams that actually competed with Benilde last year and like actually made it a game against them in the regular season. They got a lot of players back. It sounds like they've been running um, and been pretty high octane through their, um, through their scrimmages through, you know, some of these things. So, uh, I'm just curious to see how that how that game plays out. I think, I think, Matamidi did have to replace a goalie, and so did Edina. So could, this could be a high scoring game. Uh, with Interesting. Two, two good offenses. Yeah, Edina obviously DTA Nation DTA. Uh, the polls have been high on Edina. You know, Matamidi. I feel like they've been a little noisy this preseason, this off season. Um, I think this big is a fans. Cool... they're big fans. They love DTA like Nation. The players, like the yes. actual players, are Correct. big fans. And I think, and DTA... I would... but I, I think would... they're hungry. I think I think this is a this is a great opportunity for Matamidi to make a statement game that you know everyone's been buying the Hornet stock. A lot of people are sleeping. Uh, the, the the players are calling it out. The players are calling out DTA Nation for sleeping on them. If Mata Midai wants to jump in the polls quickly, if they want, they're going to get attention. If they come out east west, a lot of fans, a lot of a lot of area, you know, a lot of. Uh, I I think DTA is going to try to have somebody there. 
if Mata Mide wants to make a statement and climb up the poles and 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 laugh everybody else to sleep, Mata Mide, I come out and win this game. I was saying this. I felt like Mata Mide was the biggest snub of the poll, the preseason DTA poll. Uh, you know, there's multiple voters. Uh, they got votes, but did not get enough to get into the top 10. I thought they were for sure in my mind, like I would have bet them to be a lock for the top 10 in the preseason and they weren't. So um, they were a big snub. And I think Edina will be hey, you're right. It's a prove it game. I think the Hornets are um, no doubt a top five team. So this is a great chance. Like we've always kind of said, like if you want to be, you want to be talked about, you want to be in the top 10, you know, win the games that would make you in the top 10. This is a great opportunity I guess for both teams, honestly, in my opinion, to kind of show like, yeah, you know, this is where should we be in in the conversation? Uh, My pick, maybe in this, maybe this is recency bias, but Minnetonka putting up 24 uh, last night, coming out, playing Stillwater on Saturday. That was my pick, but a different reason. um, I, you know, is, I, I, I think people... I think people don't know where to maybe put either one of these teams. Like where, where I, I, I think Stillwater is, is, is going to be, have a squad Tonka. I don't know. They graduated a lot. I think this is going to be a very telling game, uh, you know, for both of these, both of these squads. I think I brought this up before, but what was it? Three years ago at Viking goat, I saw them play Minnetonka and Stillwater U 14 a, and I just remember being like, how on earth is this a U14 game? And the ball was never on the ground. The kids were like all six feet tall and like stocky and athletic. And I remember saying this to you guys being like, oh my gosh, in like four years, this is, they're both going to have these insane, you know, teams. And obviously there's a lot of other factors that go into it. They don't all just stay and, you know, get picked up and moved to the next grade. So, but I think this would probably be the year that, you know, it was three or four years ago that they're all kind of starting to be contributors if they're still playing, if they ended up going to those respective schools as opposed to, you know, private or moving away or whatever. And, and so I think that this is like, this is what I was waiting for for that day. It was, it was like my eyeballs were popping out of my head of like, how is this a U14 game right now? Super competitive and, I'm I'm hoping it's competitive game at the at the varsity level here this weekend. On the flip side of what I said about Matamidi, um, I thought Minnetonka was the most surprising team in the poll, the preseason poll. I, I would not, in my opinion, I was not expecting them to be as high as they were. Uh, but they they're they they were proving the pollsters right yesterday, but this is again a prove it game of like, yeah, we deserve to be there. Or maybe it was a fluke, or maybe Stillwater. I know they were high in the poll too, as maybe ex- more expected that they were going to be in there. Um, I agree. This this one's going to be a this one's going to be a battle for sure. Now, de- depending on when I get home from my scrimmage tomorrow, uh, again depends on the time. If I get home in a decent hour, am I going to try to sneak somewhere? Uh, I, I think a lot of it's going to have to do with early reporting on the food situation at White Bear Lake because in Northfield tomorrow against Farmington, there's going to be some great barbecue, um, kind of more of a a, a low-key hometown uh, barbecue joint is going to be running the concessions wow. in Northfield. And uh, so am I going to be going, am I going to be going down to Northfield or am I going to try to sneak to White Bear Lake pending I get home at a decent at a decent time to make a make a game. Yeah, you you have a lot to choose from tomorrow. Um, I think a couple other ones we don't have to talk at um, a ton about these, but two more games on, on this East West Showdown. Moorhead coming down to play Woodbury. I think that will be, you know, two teams that were kind of a, you know in I would say the top ten range last year. Moorhead was the consolation champs last year. Uh, Woodbury did not make state, but they were, I think they actually won their conference. So uh, this should be an interesting matchup. I think it'll be really competitive. And then um, Eden Prairie and White Bear Lake. 
two teams that I feel like we've talked about in the section previews as potential teams that um, you know are, are pretty solid traditionally, and uh, you know have been to state a couple times as well. So that that could be an interesting game as well. On to Monday, um, interested to see what what game grabs your eye, uh, but the one that grabs mine. Blaine coming off a one goal loss against Armstrong, an absolute barn burner is going to play Centennial. Uh, is this an upset alert type situation? I think it might be. Yeah. I, so I was hoping that we would gain something from the Blaine Armstrong game last night and a uh, seven, six overtime game really tells me nothing um, there. It either could have been really sloppy and bad on both sides competitive or it could have been really good on both sides competitive i didn't watch the game so i don't know but i would say that's probably the game i would say is most interesting on monday as well to you know and that has section implications for seating as well also maple grove osseo park center because i think they're they're kind of border battle rivals aren't they yeah yep on the think of hockey, they're combined Osseo Maple Grove. So that's odd that they split the other way. So good for them. On to Tuesday, a much bigger slate of games, uh, a few different directions you could go, you know, depending on where, where you live, you know, who you like. Uh, Egan STA though, Egan coming off a massive win. STA, I don't know if they've played a game yet. I don't yeah, think they played they a night, I think. Played a night. Um, so STA, this will be kind of a, a a good test for them coming next Tuesday. Um I, I'd like to maybe off of Egan's first win, I'd maybe lean Egan. Uh, but STA, you know, we know they're gonna be in the mix. I think this is gonna be a great matchup. Yeah, I expect um Again, this one it, this one has section implications with seeding. Uh, they generally play each other early in the year. Uh, so uh, this one, section three though, it's always it's always just weird. Like last year, those first three games, it was like Woodbury beat St. Thomas, St. Thomas beat Egan, and then Egan beat Woodbury like three in a row, and then it just messed up the seeding. So. Uh, I never know what to expect in section three. That one will be a good battle. Um, I think Benilde and Orno is an interesting game. It's a, yeah, is that a back to back with the girls? Does must, Benilde play Orno on yeah, Tuesday? Uh, yeah, on Tuesday it must be. Um, it may be. I think so. It's not a back to back. I think Benilde boys are at Orno and Benilde girls are home against Orno. I believe. I see. Um, excuse me. Um, I, again, I expect Benilde to win this game, obviously, but last year, Orno frustrated Benilde for, for a half. I think it was like, I think Orno might've even been winning at halftime. And then, you know, the depth took over for Benilde and they ended up winning the game. But, um, we've talked about Orno being on the rise. Um, and this is a, obviously a great really big test against a team that we know is, is a top team in the state. Yeah. There's matchups up and down this list. though. a lot of good ones on Tuesday on to Wednesday, top of the list. We've got another inner city battle this week. The classic Jefferson versus Kennedy East versus West, uh, the Bloomington battle. Yep. Um, well, I I mean, generally a spirited game, you know, going back to to Katie and I's days uh in Bloomington, you know, but Jefferson looked great last night. Um they went on a preseason trip. They were dialed in against Shakopee and and looked really good. So, um I think Jefferson's going to be a really good team this year. I don't know if Kennedy slash Burnsville will have the the depth to run with them, but it's it's happened before in a in a Jefferson Kennedy matchup. A lot of things can happen. A lot of things can happen. Uh yeah, a few more uh good matchups, I would say. Um one here, Robinsdale Armstrong versus Maple Grove. Yeah, I think uh, that was a 
that those are top two teams sort of fighting for uh conference uh, the Northwest Suburban last year. Um and again section implicate or yeah, section seating implications in section five. So they got conference implications and section implications in this game. I think that should be a good one. And then for kind of like an equal matchup, I'll say New Prague, Lakeville South. I looked at uh, that one too. You know, maybe maybe not a game that people highlight on on theirs, but these are a couple programs that I've actually worked with this offseason. I look at these two teams. I think this is going to be an overtime game. I think this is going to be a one-goal game. I think this is going to be a barn burner. Um, I think it's going to be a flip of the coin game. Uh, looking at kind of these two teams, I... I, I, I think this one's going to go the distance. I think it's going to go to overtime. Uh, the fans are going to get some free lacrosse. And uh, yeah, I, I think that's going to be a good a good matchup. Yeah, one thing to add for Armstrong and Maple Grove, if you're a fan of Attackman, um, this game features two absolute stud Attackman, Ricky Peterson, who we've talked about before on this show, uh, uh, from- speaking of Ricky P, I just, I, so we just scrimmaged, we just scrimmaged Maple Grove, yeah. shout out Maple Grove. They love down the alley nation, uh, from the coach down to the goalie and everybody in between, um, uh, Maple Grove loves the salsa reviews and mm-hmm. I'm, and, and Ricky P and I, I met his dad, uh, you know, he came up and, and they love down the alley. You know, we've been shouting them out. We talked Monmouth. Um, so I, I got to meet, I got to meet some down the alley fans, you know, right. after, after being on a sideline, shout out Maple Grove. I'll let you continue on Ricky P. Uh, I met Ricky P's dad, uh, and shout out to the whole program. Uh, you know, Maple Grove, they love down the alley and they're part of DTA nation. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, uh, yeah. And so Ricky P for Maple Grove, we've talked about him. Uh, one of the top scorers in the state last year as a sophomore, I, I don't expect him to slow down as a junior, uh, and then Jack Olson for Armstrong, he was uh, he put up big numbers as a freshman last year. He's only a sophomore, uh, unbelievable athlete, great lacrosse player. So two kind of premier Minnesota attackmen going at it in this game. So we'll see how the defense is scheme for to try to take those guys out of the game. That's an interesting thing to watch. You know, if you're up there in that area, definitely check that game out. And then Thursday, last game we're going to cover today. Again, another night of 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 matchups that you know, cities near each other, conference sections. The one kind of screaming out to me would be STMA because I'm I'm high on them. I'm pumping them in Section Eight and Tonka. Um, we don't know what to think of Tonka yet. A lot to a lot to a lot to come on that. STMA don't know either. What. I don't know. That's just kind of one that I'm kind of highlighting for myself of I want to I want to see how that one ends up. I for sure thought you were going to go to the obvious Lakeville North and Edina. Well, I that's a layup. Yeah, um the the Tonka St. Michael Alberville, yeah, that that is an interesting one. I guess Same section, right? No, different sections. Um but that's a, a late Same con- conference though. The late conference. Mm, yeah. That's why. Um I I don't know about this game. I again, like I said, I thought Tonka was maybe a year away with their youth, but they they were came out of the gate yesterday firing. Um I guess I'll I'll formulate an opinion after Saturday on how it goes against Stillwater. Um I think I expect Minnetonka to win this game, but St. Michael, I know they may they're maybe laying in the weeds a little bit in section eight. So and they have a really good attackman as well, Remy Lobitz. Um, that's kind of a flashy, skilled player. So um we'll see how, how that goes. And yeah, I think Lakeville North Edina is is the feature game. They last year both of these teams played, but they played like May 24th, the last mm. game of the season, and both teams had already locked up one seeds in their section. So I'm not t- not going to say that they didn't try to win or whatever, but I think the stakes were a lot lower being like, it doesn't really matter what happens. Um, ah, this game, I think this is Lakeville North's first game, and he died a, oh, large, wow. a couple under their belt. Um 
So, oh wait, no, no, North, they're North is playing say, Rochester. You can't get all your games in if you don't play this week. Yeah. Oh, um, <laughs> t- t- tell tell that to Prior Lake. Oh yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one, it, this one is is feature is is a is you know appointment viewing as they say. Um, seven thirty, Addy Dinah. I would say if you don't have anything going on that night, get to Edina and watch that game. That that's going to feature a bunch of high level players, a bunch of you know great teams. That yeah, I I don't have much more to add. I I, I don't I haven't seen either team play yet, but uh, this is like this could be like one of the best games of the year. Yeah, this could be. Uh, I'm getting Electric Factory on Electric Factory vibes. You know, we haven't named anybody in Electric Factory yet, but I yeah. think these are two potential Electric Factories going at it. And if it's anything like the first night, this will be like a 22 to nothing game or something, and it will just be like not not even close. Um, either way, it, it could go either way. Go either way. It could go either. It could be a 1918 game. I hope it's a 1918 game. I do too. I hope it's a five to four game. I hope it's not a five to four game. <laughs> the fans D- don't want that game. DTA no. Nation does not want a five to four game. DTA Nation wants a nineteen yeah, a- to eighteen game. Fine, I'll go in the middle. Twelve to eleven. That'd be a good game. That would be a great. That'd be perfect. That'd be Overtime. perfect. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um. Well, yeah. No. That that kind of does it for these week one matchups. I know we didn't talk on every single team that's playing this week. Um. Otherwise, we'd be here until next thursday still chatting um we got eventually... with us. get us a shout out like tell us something cool that happened and we'll we'll try to keep an eye on you we've got a new poll coming out is does the next poll come out next monday monday yep all right so keep an eye out for the polls um votes are votes go in on sunday uh according to sources so so Uh, a lot of games before Sunday, a lot of games before, you know, the Monday poll goes up. So I think there's going to be a lot of, I anticipate a volatile market uh, in in the, in the polls and in the stonks this year. So um, I think, I think there's going to be a lot of movement from poll one to poll two. Um, That's my prediction. Um, We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Thanks for tuning in to down the alley. And we will be back next week to chat on everything we talked about and and forecast another great week of matchups and games. Yeah.